right now we are going to meet up with a guy with uh, Mark IV R32. Uh, we're going to do a review and a shoot. Let's see how it goes. So we are here with Brandon Camella, is that how you say it last Camellia. name? Camellia. Camellia. Yeah. Sorry, I thought it was Camella. Yeah, but we are in his Mark IV R32. And uh, what what kind of setup you have in here? Uh, what kind of turbo and how big it is it? And how long has, how long has it taken you to get your car this far, I guess? Well, it's been a long process. I mean, I got this car brand new in 2004 when it was unknown to the general public uh -huh. and to the VW dealers. And it actually came across the pond because of a petition done on VW Vortex back in 2003. Uh -huh. I was one of those petitioners. And it came around, it came over, and people knew about it because of that petition. And mm -hmm. the, the stalwart, uh, you know, enthusiasts that really knew VW and really wanted this car over, it, they, they, they knew about it, but the petitioners, and it came around, it came over, and people knew about it because of that petition. And mm -hmm. the, the stalwart, uh, you know, enthusiasts that really knew VW and really wanted this car over, it, they, they, they knew about it, but people at the dealership, sales guys and stuff, didn't know anything. They're like, oh, it was, it was the GTI? No. Yeah. We knew it was all-wheel drive. We knew it was 3.2 liter. We knew all these things. Uh-huh. Because in Germany, you know, it was there already. And we were just, you know, everybody's so excited because this is like, you know, the ultimate golf. Yeah. And so it came over and I, I you know, I, I put an order in for it and the sales guy didn't know what really what it was. So I got it at MSRP. After, a few months after that, they were like selling like hotcakes. Then the general public kind of knew what it was. Uh -huh. And sale, you know, VW dealers realized what they what they had. And so it just pretty much got sold out, I think. I don't know the statistics, but probably a year or so. But um, yeah. And then ever since then, there's been different iterations of, of uh -huh, the, uh -huh. the Golf. Like that out. And then I got GIAC. You know, it was okay. It dyno pretty good. You know, I had the cat back from the EIP. EIP it was a big, big name back in the East Coast back in the day. Um, and then, so I had that exhaust, and like I had the cone, I had the Typhoon intake, and a couple other things. You have suspension parts and this and that. But then, I just, you know, I was like, oh, am I gonna keep this car? And like, I just couldn't stop loving the car. Every time I drove it, it was like, yeah, I feel exciting, the same way. I feel the know? same way about my car. Even and though I my car's stuck, I feel the same way. You couldn't get rid of it. And I still can. It's like almost 13 years later. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, to keep my interest with the car, I got to keep putting new things on it, you know, making it faster or whatever. Yeah. And then so after that, I decided I wanted to go to the next level with it. Gave a lot of horsepower up top. Not as much torque as you, you know, because supercharger, it's, it's not like a turbo. It was decent. So what they HPA did was take that kit and make their own design of a supercharger and bolted it onto the CVP kit. So you had the supercharger and you had the CVP, and suddenly you, you know you had 300, and, you know 30 or 40 horse. Um, and then the next iteration, <laughs> well, next logical progression for me. Uh, well, okay, let's say before that I went to I, UM. Jeff Atwood was doing this new uh, tuning for E85, mm -hmm. and why they don't have E85, it's like this big stigma to have ethanol for some reason, but um, California, especially uh, 
Rust Belt, uh, East Coast and stuff, there's a lot of E85 at stations because they have the corn, corn belt, rather. They have a lot of E85. Yeah, yeah. They, and so, you know, like the Subaru guys are making a ton of boost, a uh -huh. ton of power with the with the ethanol. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, so, what I, that's what I heard. And then, so, you know, uh, Jeff, basically, it was a, I was kind of the project for that in a way, a few cars. I made 50 horse on top of what I had. With I the E85. With the E85. I was making close to 400 uh, wheel. Because of the engine. So it basically had to be rebuilt. Uh -huh. Engine got rebuilt. That's when I decided, boom, I want the turbo. And that was when HPA was sourcing for Borg Warner, had this new turbo. You know, they dropped um, Garrett and stuff and, mm -hmm. and went with Borg Warner because it was new technology, the EFR series. Uh, make, it makes huge. Yeah, you might want to turn around. It makes yeah. huge torque. I was like, yeah, I want that. You know, because I didn't have a turbo on this car ever. That was his first, first turbo on it. And um, I was, man. I mean, the engine got rebuilt. I got the TT cams on it. Um, you know, I got uh, uh, the bottom in. I got uh, race, race grade connected rod bearings. Everything's internal. I mean, I mean, stock internals. Um, so, but I know there's a limit to that too. Probably 550, I heard. But um, so, uh, you know, with this turbo, I'm not going to make probably more than that anyway. It's a clutch. Mm -hmm. It's rated for 578 torque to the crank, um, and a few times up top, like third, fourth, fifth, maybe fourth and fifth. I smelled burning clutch, uh, wide open throttle. So if it's spinning the clutch at, you know it's putting that much torque. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a fairly new clutch. That was fucking fast. Yeah. What, what kind of suspension you got on this car? Uh, it's KW uh, V3s. And uh, a Neospeed uh, front and rear uh, sway bars that are 25 okay. mils, millimeter. Um, the rear uh, strut brace. I have is from uh, Chris Levin, who uh, originally designed the first one. I think this was the first one when Tomas Ford Tuning was in uh, Richmond, uh, and we put that in. And this was the first iteration, and that was like 2005, I want to say. Wow! But that thing really stabilized the back. It just firmed it up real hard. It's right behind the, the back seat, and <laughs> it just bolts the, the two uh, sides together. Uh, where you know where the back seat flips in, yeah. To the, to the, to the, to the clips. We're gonna do a quick pull. Yeah, because I was going slow the whole time. I was just, I was just like yammering the whole entire time, yeah. wasn't I? No, it's okay. Yeah. I, don't I, I don't know if I should record front or record us. I don't oh, know I don't if know, I want to see my reaction you or. You probably want to see your reaction. Yeah, let's okay. <laughs> Okay, I've got, um, well, HPA, obviously, it's a big one. You know, I gotta give them props for the, the, tit, the kit. Um, United More Sports, Jeff Atwood. Um, incredible tune. Best tune, period. Bar none. Tomas Sport Tuning, who originally did the install. Um, they did it, you know, they worked on it really hard for a long time. It works in Kona, uh, Matt and Company. Those guys just find stuff and they iron it out. Very efficient. All right, thanks. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for the experience and Give me Bye, for, the, this is for the ride and checking out your car. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh. It's like a mm. new pinnacle of speed has been reached. <laughs>
600 horses. <laughs> oh my god.